All right, so we're back to formalize this. And again, a fair amount of vocabulary, but this again, as I said earlier, we're gonna hit one of the most important things that we're gonna be doing in terms of setting up the rest of the course. So first of all, control group. Your control group is used to give a baseline comparison. Control group is what happens or what would you expect if nobody does, if nothing happens, okay? So um, what is the baseline? blood levels, what is the baseline, SAT scores, whatever, okay? You also have something called blinding, which I kind of alluded to, but we're gonna talk more about here. Now, blinding is when the subjects or the researchers who are involved with the subjects have no idea if they're getting the treatment or if they're part of the control group, okay? If it's just the subjects, then it's called single blind because they don't know what's going on. If the researchers are also not in on it, then it's called a like double blind. And those are the most effective ones because nobody can influence what's going on. A friend of mine who's down in the University of Texas, um, I forget which branch, is actually was one of the patients for one of the um, coronavirus vaccines. People have been asking her, hey, how's it going? How is it doing? Are you feeling okay? Et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, yeah, I feel great. You know, I had a couple of she had a little bit of stuff with it, but she has no idea whether or not she's gotten the placebo or if she got the actual vaccine to test it. And part of that is, is because then she doesn't have, there's no way that she can kind of influence herself or psychologically impact herself. And neither can the researchers when she goes in to answer questions. Um, placebo effect. And that's kind of also what's going on. So when the fake treatment works, okay? So, um, you know, so that's again, you just think it's gonna work and go from there. Now, for the four key principles of experiments, here are the four things that you need to have happen when you set up an experiment. First of all, you need to have a comparison. You need to have at least two or more treatments. So, and one of the treatments is that you're doing nothing, so that's gonna be your control, all right? But you have to be able to compare it to something else. There's no comparison, it's not an experiment. The second part, Random assignment. Everybody has to have an equal chance to go into either group, or if you have more than one group, you know, or more than two groups, all three groups. All right. So there's some sort of random assignment. Everybody gets numbered. We pick 50 numbers. They go in this group. The next 50 numbers go in this group. Everybody else goes in the last group. That type of thing. And I just realized I was speaking really fast. So feel free to pause wherever you need to. So comparison, random assignment. Third, ta -da, control group. We already kind of talked about that. Keep all other variables. Be, what the control group does is it keeps all other variables besides the treatments constant. Since you're randomly assigning everybody, you have a fairly likely chance, and we're going to talk more about this as we go along in the course, that if somebody has high blood pressure in the control group, they probably will, have, you will probably have somebody with high blood pressure in the experimental group. And so everything there kind of balances out. Is it perfect? No. But if you're dealing with a larger group type of experiment where you've got 50, 100, thousands of people, that's all going to even out. And that's why the control group and the random assignment is so important. And then lastly, replication. Okay. And that's also kind of building on this, using enough experimental units to distinguish the differences. Okay. You have enough people in the group that if it's happening in one, it's gonna happen in the other. You have men in one, you have men in the other. There's women in one, there's women in the other. There's people with um, you know, some sort of hormonal problem in the first one, maybe probably have it in the second one. And sometimes you can screen out for those, but you know, it's gonna be one of those things where you need to make sure you have comparison. And then these three are closely related. Because of the random assignment, it's going to allow the control and the replication to happen. So anything that's happening in one group is probably gonna happen, show up in the other group, which is why that control is gonna be helpful. All right, as usual, take a look at the check for your understanding, pause the video, and come on back. So here, the situation is the utility programs. And so they're talking about whether or not, um, small digital displays outside the household would actually help with electricity costs. Okay, so the company decides to conduct an experiment using 60 households to compare the two approaches. Do we do a display or do we have a chart? 
and with a group of customers who receive the information about the energy consumption, but no help monitoring electric electricity. So it's just up to them. One, there's a display. The other people, they're charting. So explain why it's important to have a control group that didn't get a display or the chart. Um, it allows to show what the typical amount of electricity use is. Okay, so it's a baseline. These are people who aren't necessarily monitoring their electricity use. What do they normally use? Because again, maybe just charting is enough. Maybe the little display will be enough. So label how to randomly assign these treatments. So the way that you would go about this is you're going to label all the households from 1 to 60. You're going to use a random number generator, however you want to do that, to choose 20 distinct numbers between 1 and 60. The first 20 of those give to the display. Could I say the chart? Yes. It doesn't matter which one you pick first. I usually just go in the order so I don't miss anything. So you're gonna, so the first 20 numbers, unique numbers that are chosen, those households are going to go into the just get the display for electric, electricity use. You're going to do it another 20 times, get another 20 unique numbers, ignoring any of the repeats, and those are going to be assigned to the chart, and everybody else gets to be part of the control group. Okay? Um, the purpose of the randomly assigned treatments, and again, this is going back up to what we talked about at the top, it creates roughly equivalent groups. So it balances out all the other variables. So you might have one house. So let's say, you know, <clears throat> I've got teenage boys um, and two of them like to play a lot of games. The other one likes to watch a lot of television. Okay, We have a high electricity use. We have a high internet use. We have a high food consumption use, actually. Um, but if we randomly assign this, the odds are that Another high energy use, maybe because of gaming or something, would be in a different group. Now, for the outline, this is going to be probably, if you're going to remember one thing, this is going to be one of the big, one, big ones. You're going to take these 60 houses, and you're going to say, okay, we're going to randomly assign them. And by saying random assignment, it's assumed it's an SRS for the most part. And you're going to say, I'm going to have group one of 20 people, I'm going to have, or 20 households, I'm going to take group two of 20 households, I'm going to take group three of 20 households, okay? I'm going to give them each a treatment. You have to name out what those treatments are. Treatment number one, they get an electric display of how much they're using. Treatment number two, they are going to chart it. And treatment number three, there's none, and they're the control group. And then, after time passes, poof, you're going to compare their electricity use. We will get into later how you can tell if a treatment is actually significant or not. But that's not, that's for another day. Actually, that's for a whole other chapter. So hopefully that helps. But again, this you need to know very, very well because this isn't on the um, formula chart. And this idea down here, great to organize it. Hopefully it'll be helpful. All right. So one more section in 4.2. We'll talk to you soon. If you have any questions, throw them down below. And I think I just did all that out of order. <laughs> Talk to you later.